folks, what you just heard was a musical rendition by Professor Fawzi Afzal Khan, who happens to be in the studio with us. Welcome, Professor Saiba. Thank you, Dr. Saab. What are your motivations for making these series of <coughs> rather um, contemporary videos? Well, um, you know, I was in Pakistan uh, visiting. I was on sabbatical from my institution here where I teach in, the, in New Jersey, and I was in Lahore. And um, it was a very, uh, I've always been interested in music, just, uh, you know, this music for its own sake. I've been trained uh, in uh, Indian classical as a young uh, girl growing up in Pakistan before I came here. So, I mean, I love making music and it was a chance, um, you know, I had decided to perform. I was invited actually to perform at uh, one of the largest uh, performing arts festivals that is held annually in Lahore. It's held in Lahore every year in uh, around November or so um, under the auspices of the Peer, uh, it's called the Peer Festival of Performing Arts and a very large component of it is dedicated to uh, world music and uh, so I was invited this year to actually be the opening act on their uh, music world uh, music night for fusion music. So after that I started thinking, you know, I really would like to do something which um, I can also take back and show to uh, my friends and colleagues and maybe use it in some way in my work also. So I'm always looking for opportunities to bring my artistic um, interests uh, into the classroom and into what I teach and what I research. So I was lucky enough to find a young uh, recording artist who heard me who said, why don't you come over to my recording studio? We can maybe experiment, um, uh, you know, with what you do, what you are singing, what you might like to do. And he was very interested, actually, himself. His name is Faraz. And uh, the uh, first uh, sacrifice, um, that particular recording was done in his studio in Lahore. And that came about because, uh, you know, we were just experimenting with music. And I'm also a poet. I, And he wanted something, you know, which I could make more contemporary. but also rooted in the traditions of that uh, area and for a long time here as well uh, I have uh, been working with jazz musicians for example Before in the we go to jazz, Professor Saba, let me ask you in that uh, video that we just saw a little earlier you talk about sacrifice yes. and you talk about gendered notion of that sacrifice right. uh, talk to us a little bit more about that please well I mean I think that uh, um, you know as I was saying that when I started working with uh, this musician Faraz and we were you know just sort of playing really at making music in his studio I became very inspired one evening thinking about um, you know these ideas that um, sort of uh, came up in the poem which is really the basis from which then the music arose uh, that poem just came to me one night as we were singing and he was playing some notes of different melodies on his um, on his keyboard and I just asked him for a pen and pencil, you know, a pe pen and paper, and I said, I just feel like writing. Uh, and that's how the poem actually uh, got written. And it came out of this, uh, you know, for a long time, I, I, I mean, I'm a teacher of uh, a professor also who works in the area of women's studies, uh, feminist theory, uh, global feminism, and so on, and uh, most recently, peace and justice studies. And so I started really thinking, and I have been thinking, about the issues that confront the world uh, currently and uh, particularly this era of unending war and violence that we uh, have been plunged into um, uh, since 9-11, not that it wasn't happening before, but it's come to the surface in a, in a new and palpable and a much more frightening way since then. And that led me to think about gendered notions of violence. I mean, you know, would uh, a woman leader of the free world, would she be any better uh, at uh, preventing uh, the world from reaching what I feel is really an apocalyptic moment uh, in which we can easily destroy ourselves and our planet? Um, uh, or is violence turned outward really a male phenomenon? And then somehow my questioning led me to thinking about notions of sacrifice and how we associate sacrifice primarily with uh, with mothers who send their sons off to war and they're meant to be sacrificing for the homeland, for homeland security and so on. Where do these notions come from and where do they take us and where have they taken us in terms of the world that we live in? So that's really what was playing on my mind and of course, uh, very ironically, 
after I wrote the poem, uh, you know, Benazir Bhutto in Pakistan got assassinated and in her latest book, which she was working on at the time, she talks about sacrifice and the notion of Karbala. So I started thinking about, you know, and people talked about her death as the death of a martyr and that she was really, it's a sacrifice uh, that she made for the cause of democracy in Pakistan and so on. So these things obviously were there in the air, in the atmosphere. I was picking up on them and being a poet and a creative person, they somehow made their way into the poem and then later into the music itself. Well, as I heard you s sing your own words, your own poem, it called to my mind a uh, famous couplet by Ahmed Ibn Qasmi, I open my eyes when I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, So I think you had made a distinction in your yes. <coughs> elaboration between male and female expression yes. of sorrow yes. and sacrifice. Talk to us about the connection between sorrow and sacrifice as you see it. You know, there is a very deep connection. Um, it's a complicated question. And I think um, I probably I cannot answer it adequately, but I feel that there is obviously a deep connection, which I'm sure all of us can see, because sacrifice uh, entails sorrow. Um, and I, when I was thinking about absolutely, and I do draw this distinction between <coughs> sort of male and female approaches to an understanding of and the lived experience of sacrifice, that I think um, sort of generally, and st speaking in obviously generalizations, because I think there are exceptions to this, that generally what we call not male necessarily, but masculinist is a better word, mm -hmm. um, which has to do with sort of patriarchal, the notions uh, that have evolved under patriarchal ways of thinking uh, that have been with us for so, for so long, um, that masculinist uh, ways of expressing or dealing with uh, sacrifice and sorrow are quite different. And generally speaking, that notion, you know, the masculinist notion is more sort of sacrifice as something that can be seen externally, that can then be, um, you know, also validated externally, um, that calls attention to itself as, uh, uh, you know, a, a code of honor and, and, and something that is associate, associated with male uh, visions or masculinist visions of honor, which often then are visited very negatively upon women and women's bodies. And so you have talked about Muharram, I think. And then reference. in that connection, Muharram came, became a kind of metaphoric construct that I started working with in, in the poem itself. And um, also, you know, then was uh, visualized in the in the video that was made uh, about the song in the poem. And in there, you know, I've uh, been fascinated by the self-flagellation, which is a form of mourning and sorrow, but it refers to the the sacrifice um, of uh, Hazrat Hussain and Hassan in Karbala. 